Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to wait a minute to see if you can hear me, if you can see me. I tried to make my camera a bit more, a bit less slopey because it tends to go in this kind of slippery slope. Um, a look, um, the wind is blowing. Seems like we're going to have like tail end of some kind of hurricane, don't we? Oh, someone just bought some 13 arts. Thank you. <laughs> Very exciting. Very exciting collaboration. Please say hello. Tell me if you can see me, you can hear me. That would be lovely if you did. Um, I'm just wondering, can I uh, do, 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 pop out chat? I want the chat to pop out. Fantastic. Yes, good stuff. Okay. Fantastic. Good morning, Karen. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Lynn. Hello, ladies. Lovely to have you with me as always. I hope you can hear me. You can see me. Um, good morning, Rhoda. Um, yes, I think we're all set. I hope you can hear me and see me. All good. You can certainly see me. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Hello. Okay, I'm just going to pop that down to make sure that my process is not going crazy. Uh, it's a great day in Scotland. It's a great day here as well. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Um, Lynn, why can't I see anything? I don't know, sweets. Uh, do, do, do. I'm gonna switch off my email because it's gonna keep beeping. Um, because I do get a lot of emails. I'm not bragging. <laughs> uh, sunshine here in Edinburgh. Oh, fantastic! Uh, Lynn, try to refresh. See if you can see me. In, in if you can, you can hear. Well, I think you can hear me. All right, everyone. Uh, hi, Lynn. Good morning. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. I'm always excited for these YouTube sessions um, because I thought it's really good to have a little bit of creative play with the new brand. You have seen me, you have seen me demoing 13 Arts before, probably about last year when we had our first Mixed Media Day, which by the way, we need another Mixed Media Day. I keep saying, should we have another Mixed Media Day? Thumbs up if we should have another Mixed Media Day. Or just say yes, because I don't know how to do thumbs up on YouTube. Anyhow, I'm going to move this away and uh, and I thought I'm going to show you the range and kind of share a little bit my thoughts. Good morning, Maria. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share my thoughts and just show you how things are working and what they are. Kat is sitting right next to me because he always does during this, these sessions. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yes, we're another mixed media day. Fantastic. I shall really get on the case because uh, I've got some idea for online workshops so they could coincide with the Mixed Media Day and yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's do this. So 13 Arts. Um, 13 Arts is a Polish brand, as you guys may or may not know, uh, is a Polish brand that has been created by Aida, Aida Domisiewicz. Domisiewicz. And um, Aida and Craftbox have well, 13 Arts and Craftbox have joined forces and Craftbox is going to be an exclusive distributor. Um, and I'm uh, just reading. Good morning. Hi, Kim. Hi, Francis. Um, so, yeah, so um, Craftbox is going to be, uh, is already an exclusive distributor of 13 Arts in the UK. Um, it is a very good brand. It's a very uh, affordable brand. Um, so I think we can make some noise about it. Uh, some exciting things are coming and it's definitely there are definitely things that you can um, kind of you can almost uh, make your own your own creative chemistry because um, 13 arts gives you all raw materials to be creative and and then what you do with it you know it's just um, it's just your own thing which is fantastic okay so I thought I'm going to start with a little product introduction. I'm going to show you a few uh, techniques as I come along. Good morning Maria. Hi Sarah. Hello, hi, hi everyone. Hi, my, my, my deep pets. <laughs> hi, Pam. Hi. Hello, darlings. Oh, lovely to have you with me. Okay, so um, the first thing, uh, what should I show you first? I've got quite a few products. I've got sprays. I've got, okay, let's start from the basics. Okay, let's start from the basics. Let's start from the mediums. Okay, mediums. Right. Oh, someone just bought a craft box. <laughs> um, okay, mediums. Um, so I have six mediums on the website. 
um and then the the seventh one i haven't put that on yet but i will very shortly so if you are after this uh then please um just hold on i will i am going to put it on after the stream this is the acrylic liquid medium which i think you could think of it a little bit as a pouring medium i think that could be really good for um diluting your paints to do acrylic pours pour, pours pores <laughs> um and then and then we've got the uh, mediums uh the gessos and the, and the kind of modeling paste and all that um you know all that stuff hi julia good morning so let's have a look at some of the mediums so um we have okay we have these and these and then this one which as i said is going to be on our website later so we have gel medium uh gel medium normally is used as a really good adhesive um you know you can seal things with it um it's got this quite a thick consistency um really you know really kind of thick um reminds me of um oh actually reminds me of japanese sweet sweets so just ignore me um but yeah i'm into japanese sweets at the moment <laughs> um so we got that we got the gel medium then we also have the uh, multi-purpose medium uh, which has a slightly different consistency um, and i think like in general i need to speak to ida in detail about the actual difference but i normally see gel medium as a really good adhesive and i'll just keep it to that um and then the multi-purpose medium you know for sealing your art extending your paints etc so um you know um i will i will check with her what is the difference i can see a little bit difference in consistency and color so there must be you know there obviously must be different um then we have the modeling paste the modeling paste um from uh 13 arts is a very interesting one because it kind of is a little bit doming one not that it actually puffs up and domes but at the at the edges of it of it kind of uh, dry flat if that makes sense so you get that kind of lovely doming effect like, almost like embossing which i personally really love i am going to demo this because i think this is a really good look um but i'm going to show you hi karen good morning i am going to show you uh, this i actually need to see a preview of my camera to see what i'm doing i'm going to show you this and this is what i have done on hochanda um and um come on zoom in oh here we go what I've done on Conchanda, and uh, this is already dry sample. This is of white gesso, actually. Oh, was that texture paste? This is this might actually be texture paste because I was talking about texture paste. This is black gesso, but we get to that in a second. So, um, so that is the paste. It is really, really thick as well, um, and it's got you know it's got a lot of chalk in it, uh, or you know of the powder which I think is really good. I am going to demo this in a second and we're going to do some interesting techniques with it in a moment as well. And then we go on to your gessos and they are really thick. So you have your clear gesso that you use as a, you know, as a use for it on, on something that you, when you want to see the, still see the color of it. Um, so on your brass embellishments, for example, if you want to add some pigments to it or spray them with something like chalk spray, for example, or if you want to seal a piece of um, you know 12 by 12 paper and still see the background of it so um that would be a one use and you have your white gesso again it's incredibly thick you could use it as a texture paste in fact um i have done that and it just gives you this really crisp image what i really like about it is so thick but when you start actually using it on the surface it just goes on beautifully it just spreads out beautifully and you don't you know don't have any problems with uh, actually distributing this um i have um i know for a fact that you can take a little bit and put in a smaller pot for example add a little bit of water it's water dilutable and make it more liquidy just so you're still going to get that pigmentation of white pigmentation of color really really good stuff and then you have the black gesso um, you know it's very similar story um, you've got this really thick jelly like consist gel like consistency very spreads very well on your um on your background um and then you can dilute it if you wanted a slightly more liquidy surface so you've got that those four and you also have the acrylic liquid medium and you could you know you could make your own paints with it um you could make your you know you you could use it for pouring for acrylic pour, pour it, pouring <laughs> for acrylic pour, pouring um and uh, you know it is affordable way to start with uh with pouring if you for example you know 
none feel that a big uh, a bottle of uh, pentart stuff is you know something you want to invest in yet um so that is you know that is one of the uh, one of the ideas we have so um what i'm going to do is another thing i'm going to introduce now and then i'm going to move into kind of mixing those things and doing a little bit of creative mixology i guess is um I wanted to introduce you to the um, rainbow colors, rainbow colors, um, and the rainbow colors are uh, are dry pigments. They are um, color in a, you know, color in a, in a shaker bottle, pretty much, if you if you will. And um, and I've got a, I've got a huge range of those on Craftbox website. If you are after any of those, um, if you love your brushes, if you love your uh, color art stuff. Um, they do not shift shimmer, so obviously there's a big difference between them and color art. Um, but they, but if you love your brushes, then this may be a more affordable way of playing because you know the colors are beautiful and and you get a really really good amount of those. And you can do some really great magic with that. And that's what I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. Um, and do you know what? Well, let's just start here, and then I'm just going to kind of keep introducing things. Um, as I go but let's just do a little bit of, of a play and just show you a few things I love those kind of technique based demos because they're just they're just so exciting um she says and then I really need a piece of white paper can you hear that crow oh my gosh craziness uh where are you white paper okay I'll find it in a moment oh I may use a postcard oh yeah okay I found I found something that I can use I'm going to use a piece of postcards I'm not going to be using anymore so I'm going to get some of those perfect for little demos like that. Okay, great stuff. Okay, right, let's get started. Oh, hello. Gosh, we've got 51 of you. Hello, everyone. Very warm welcome to this demo. I, ho I really hope you like it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm demoing 13 hours if you only just started watching. And all the products are available on craftbooks.co.uk. The link is in the description box. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of gel medium and I'm going to mix it with um, some of the beautiful pigments we have just to show you how they really react and how you can make your own products with it. I will also take a little bit of gesso, that really thick gesso. And again, I hope this will show you the consistency and how far it goes. Um, I'm going to take, and no, I'm not going to take clear just so, I'm going to take uh, some modeling paste as well and get this one. You can see they've got very different consistencies. Very interesting. And then uh, I think that is it for now. Uh, that's what I'm going to take. And oh, and I'm also going to take the liquid, uh, liquid acrylic medium and I'm just going to pour a little bit here. Don't let it spread too far. Okay, so take my. Uh, paper just clean my palette knife i will do that in between all of them okay so here we go so the first thing i've got is the pink and i'm going to put that pink in the liquid medium and i'm going to give it a really good mix oh have a look at this beautiful translucent paint obviously you can mix it up really really well i'm just going to add a little bit more okay oh what a gorgeous color so you would get if you wanted a very very faint glaze i think the uh the pigment pandas would be good for art journaling definitely kim i mean they're great for all sorts of things but yeah i think art journaling would be really good okay so let's have a look at this very nice faint glaze okay and you've got a little bit of grit on there as well probably will dissolve eventually so here we go that's the color I think that's really nice oh, I love it okay that is really lovely and then we can add some other colors so I will add the yellow the one I'm using here is called yellow amber then uh, in the gesso in the white gesso I'm going to add navy blue and oh loving good mixology don't you and then in the clear gel, I'm going to use the brown. Ta -ta -ta. Okay, here we go. You can see it's already started reacting with some of those mediums. I'm going to take my towel and I'm just going to make sure that I keep on top of cleaning my palette knife because I don't want to contaminate it with things when I'm showing you different colours. Okay, I'm just going to get that one off. There we go. 
Okay, so let's have this one. Let's see this one. Um, this was texture paste and I used the yellow. Oh, this is beautiful, this colour. I lo oh, love a good mixology. Really, really love a good mixology. Oh, have a look at this beautiful colour. We definitely need to use on something to show you how that actually works. I'm just going to scrape that. Gorgeous. I love that kind of yellowy. What kind of yellow is it? It's just kind of slightly more muted yellow then this was the blue this was sorry this was the uh, white gesso and that's what i'm gonna so you can just really oh again make a texture paste you know this is texture paste this is this is paint this is anything you want and those mediums because you get such a big um because you get such a big pot you know this is not a 50 milliliter or whatever pot this is 120 mil and they also so thick they go really long way so you can dilute them to your heart's content and then we have this one which was the gel medium so this will give you a more transparent translucent look oh look at this gorgeous kind of coffee going to red I think this is absolute an absolute stunner. Oh, I love this. A quite a good combination of colours I've got here, don't you think? A bit eastery, I've got to say. But um, you know, obviously you can pick whatever colour you want. Okay, I think we should just give it a go. We should just give it a go on our, our surface and uh, see how, how it looks when it's paint. The blue is lush. They are very, very lovely. Okay, so let's have a look. So I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow. Mind you, I've got pink on my brush. Hold on. I should really put them in water. What do you think? The baby wipes are rescue. Maybe some baby wipes. I didn't realise YouTube is like doing hochanda, except you don't get breaks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. Can I say to the presenter, can you show the products again? <laughs> I'm on Hochanda tomorrow, by the way, with Famirin, if you want to have a look. Okay, so here is the yellow that we have created. It, it's got a little bit of pink, but forgive it, please. Please forgive me for the pink. Right, this was the gesso with uh, blue. Look at this beautiful coverage. The coverage is amazing. It, it's amazing. And then we have the this gorgeous coffee which obviously is going to be a little bit translucent because we used it with um, a clear gel. But you know what? I'm really interesting to see, interesting? I am interesting, hopefully. But um, I'm quite interested to see how that, um, how the brown is going to look with white gesso. I think this would be a really good look. Um, so I am going to take a baby wipe and clean my, uh, and clean my palette knife and take a little bit of that. Okay, and take that brown. Uh, by the way, if you were wondering what it's called, it's called brown. Um, I hope it is on the website. Um, if it, oh, actually, it may not. Uh, no, it is on the website. I'm fairly sure it is on the website. Okay, it is on the website in that section. Um, uh, saying UK stock because I've got these in stock. I've got quite a few of these in stock. If you're interested, again, a really affordable way to get your pigments because I think they're just just over three pounds or three pounds something like that and you barely using anything okay so obviously this will give you a slightly different um color but i think we can do some really nice magic with this on the project when we get to the project loving this this is really nice i'm wondering i'm just wondering what how what is the color concentration we can we can eventually get so I am going to put quite a lot in. I'm just wondering if we can get to fairly dark down. Or would it? Oh no, okay. It's getting darker. And definitely it takes a moment to, to uh, get this gets dissolved a little bit because I can see. Love it. No, this is great. Okay, I'm going to keep this palette knife because I'm going to um, be using this in a second. But have a look at this beautiful colour um, concentration really really pigmented okay so that was it i am thinking that we possibly need to see that through a little bit of stenciling okay so that nicely leads me to stencils stencils um 13 hours have a range of stencils 
and we have quite a few of them in stock if you don't have them in stock they are in the section called uh polish pre or polish pl pre-order and i am i can then um i can order them for you if you're interested um so um i've got this stencil which is called the tattered tattered circles and that is on the website i've got the war word ones i've got the happiness one and i've got the memories one memories is one of my favorite oh so, so, I kind of said on, on her channel it may not look like that great and what I meant is the effect you get on the actual project is amazing and I'm not sure if you you know if you see from actually seeing this uh, stencil if you kind of can see with your mind, mind's eye how it's going to uh, look and work when it's uh, when it's on your project that's what I meant I, just, oh, I don't know it's just sometimes you say things and it's like oh what on earth am I saying what else am I saying the pressure of live tv Okay, so I'm going to pop that down. It is my favourite, one of my favourite stencils. I love the script and the all kind of words and wording um, type of um, stencils. Some of my absolute favourites. Right, so I am taking the white gesso with the brown and I'm going to take it through... I've lifted my stencil, silly girl. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to take it through the stencil and then I'm going to clean my palette knife and just take some of the other ones just to show you how that will work so I'm going to take a little bit of the brown and then maybe blend it a little bit okay oh nice and then I will take a little bit of the blue lovely color combo when they're all together they are watching you in the garden now the dogs wanted to go and didn't want to miss something oh thank you pal that's good darling okay so just going to take a little bit of the blue Again, what was the blue with? The blue was with white gesso, I want to say. With white gesso. And this one was text with texture paste, I think. And then the one with the texture paste, which is the yellow. So I'm going to get through here. Oh, wow. That looks amazing, if I may say so. You should really wash them straight away. Obviously, I'm going to probably ruin it. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time. I don't have a little helper to help me, but look at this effect. I mean, isn't that amazing? I love word stencils. I love this little kind of color medley. I would say that blue may not necessarily go with it. Not sure. I think that stencil sold out. Oh, okay. Um, Lynn, I am going to uh, add some more, actually, because I can always ask... Um, I can always ask for that, uh, for that, I can always ask Ada to add some more. Oh, for goodness sake, they send me some more. I can't really speak. <laughs> okay, let, um, let me just uh, take a small, tiny little break. And then I'm going to very quickly uh, increase the stock of that beautiful stencil. Um, because uh, we do have more. Um, so if you just um, bear with me for one second. Let's do a little shopping break, as they say on our chanda. <laughs> So if you just give me one second, guys, let's have a look. And the product is memories. So if you want that specific stencil, you can get that in just a second. Where is that stencil? Okay, stencil UK stock. Come on, little stencil. Don't be. Oh, it is. It has sold out. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much for letting me know. Here we go. There are more on the website now. Okay, done. Right, shopping break over. <laughs> Unless you want to get the stencil. Um, okay, where did I have you, uh, my darlings? Because I completely lost you now. I can't see a thing. Um, and here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm just trying to find myself. Ooh, did I find myself? Come on. Okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, thank you very much. Right, okay. So the stencil is back in stock. So this is what we achieved with this beautiful colour combination. Um, it is, yeah, I think it's rather beautiful. And it will just... It's just so intricate as well, and that's what I love about um, those stencils and everything else. Uh, as I said, by all means, do clean yours if you can. If you're not on YouTube or Hotchanda <laughs> and you've got the time. Okay, 
so I am going to clean mine at some point in the future. Okay, so uh, some other things I wanted to show you today. I'm going to take a little bit of a wet wipe and do some cleaning as I go. Um, some other things I want to show you are the paints. The paints are some of my absolute favourites. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, oh, hi, Caroline. Hello. Um, right. I think um, that um, they are absolutely beautiful. The colours are vibrant. And, um, oh, okay. Well, let me show you. Let just let me just show you and then just drop it in the paint because that's what you do on live stream or TV. Um, OK, colours, colours are absolutely stunning. So have a look at some of that stuff. The one I'm showing you at the moment is lavender purple, uh, lavender purple. And then we also have a similar kind of colour, uh, which is called amethyst violet, but it's it's significantly darker, obviously. Lavender purple, amethyst violet. Uh, we have the mermaid tail. The mermaid tail has been it was in your mixed media box, um, but we obviously have on our website because we have the whole range. We got the beautiful orchid pink. We have the very very lovely flamingo pink, which is the nice bright. They're all nice vibrant bright colours. You get a lot of colour pigmentation. Um, I just noticed that on YouTube, this mermaid tail looks more bluey. It's actually more teal in real life. Everything else looks kind of similar. This one, the the, the pink one, maybe just a little bit more fuchsia. And let's have a look at some other ones. This one's vampire red, which is kind of reddish, pinky, rasp, maybe not raspberry color. Um, we also have uh, coral pink. And what other colours can I show you? Are oh, beautiful. We have the yellow amber. I hope I've got enough room for that. I really should clean this mess. One of my personal favourite, the olive. I um, hope you can see that one. Um, and then you have deep sky, and you have the uh, buttercream. Um, you also have the uh, cafe au lait. And there is also white and black, which are oh, hold on now. I've got I've got one here. I've got black here, and then there's white downstairs. And I might have missed something. Um, okay, we also have alien green, which is a very fun name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I believe there are seventeen altogether. We have all of them in stock. Uh, I did vampire red already. There's also like a rose one. I've got all of them in stock. They are on the website. The link is down below. <laughs> That's okay. Bye, Nikki. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then, so these are the these are the different colours we have. I am going to show you some pigmentation of that gorgeousness. And take that. Because I think they are rather, rather special. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of that and show you. Hold on. I should really not start with the lightest one, especially if my brush needs a little bit of cleaning. Um, let's just take... Okay, I will, I will start with this one. Okay, here you go. So you get a really nice coverage um, from those paints. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you go, Nikki. Um, uh, yeah, so you get really nice coverage with those. Uh, let me show you some other colours as well. I'm just going to try to clean my brush fairly well. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of purple. Have a look at that gorgeous colour combination and gorgeous colour pigmentation. They are really pretty. Are there any specific colours you'd like me to show you? How they actually look on the paper? Then give me a shout. I am going to do olive as well because olive is one of my personal favorite colors and obviously it's coming to bit over to it's coming a bit it is coming to um halloween so that is a beautiful color, color combination as well okay so that is the colors we have i'm going to close them up and i think we're going to get cracking with a little bit of a project don't we because i also want to show you some uh some sprays the sprays have been a big hit so just give me one second and I'm just going to close all of these. You kind of need someone to help you close it all off, don't you? I have an idea for, well, I have a very brief idea for a project. So we see how we get on with those beautiful, beautiful products. I'm going to clean my, um, my 
surface here but maybe I will use some of it um, and then we will quickly dry it as well love those paints and they close so easily as well you just get the little pop and you know they're securely closed which is great a little click click and another click okay fabulous all right um 13 arts also have oh yellow okay so i just noticed your uh, yellow let's have a quick look at the yellow for lynn um so taking that one beautiful beautiful color payoff so that's that's the yellow lynn um okay so let me clean my brush and i want to use some of those as, as a stencil paste through a stencil and I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with my board from uh, Snip Art. Because that's like 30 hours of Snip Art, much made in heaven. You can see what I've done here. Um, and I'm going to take some of the white gesso and just cover this entire surface here. I'm kind of keeping all this mess in front of me because I want to use some of it rather than just put it on a baby wipe and get rid of it gesso very jelly consistency as you can see but the moment you start spreading it beautiful okay very easy to work with mm -hmm. okay cover this whole thing including the black gesso and you can see how very opaque it is that in just you know in just pretty much one good coat i've got that entire um, black gesso just covered the covered there very very opaque one coat is enough you don't have to really worry about more adding more uh, it dries really quickly but obviously will help if you have a heat gun and you zap it quickly because then you can just apply stencil paste etc um, without worrying that something's going to move underneath needs a little bit more that's fine i'm gonna dry the rest when i dry my uh st tension uh, attention paste what structure paste okay so i'm going to take some of those colors i i am thinking of doing vintage project so i might i might what i might do yeah okay i'm going to use quite a lot of stencil paste and then we're going to put some snip art on top and just kind of build a little bit of a focal point so i'm going to put that do, 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 that stencil here i've already got some stenciling as you could see so um this will be looking quite nice i think and i'm going to take some of that brown and just apply it in a few places and then we can tidy up my table don't have to be precious with it i just kind of go with it as you can see it's going to be a bit of a mixture here we go have a look at this beautiful color combo you just made your own mixed you know well mixed media obviously but you're on kind of mix of different things i just think it looks fabulous i'm just going to add that to here and then use the rest of my texture paste here and then take a little bit of that yellow as well and then give it a mix together i think this will look great okay here we go and one more just a little bit here on the edge don't have to be too much doesn't have to be too much but this is what we get isn't that great i mean that's so quick and if some areas where we added that gel paste are going to be a little bit see-through and some will be properly um so will be properly uh, opaque which is just gorgeous okay that's that i'm going to take a little bit of uh, my uh, baby wipe i'm kind of running out of baby wipes so that's going to be interesting and then just dab it onto this quickly i i really i'm going to soak it in water later on and i hope that um i will be able to take majority of this off okay fine all right, put that to the side get it to wash all right we do and you need to zap it with the heat gun um so bear with me whilst i'm doing that 
It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, are you guys doing my my introduction to mixed media workshop on uh, in Birmingham on Saturday? I think we've got four spaces left, um, so I'm really excited about this one. Please join me if you can. It will be so informative. I think you're just going to uh, leave with a bunch of ideas um, for your for all your creative endeavors, endeavors really. And I really hope that uh, you know I can inspire you to uh, do a lot of exciting mixed media. Really, really excited about that workshop. I think this will be amazing. Do you know what? Whilst, I'm, whilst this is drying, actually, I'm not going to bore you with the heat and the going. Whilst this is drying, I'm just going to work on something else. Because I am thinking of using some snip art, as I might have mentioned already. Possibly I have. I'm going to use this one. Which, by the way, if you're waiting for new snip art, Martha is cutting loads for me. So I should get my... Uh, I, sh I really should get my... Um, delivery very soon fingers crossed i am going to use those two and i'm thinking of painting them um so i'm probably going to paint them separately and then um, i will adhere them together so i will give them a paint with do 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 where are you white gesso with white gesso very briefly and then we're going to use some sprays so that will be a really good introduction to sprays and splashings as well we're going to use sprays we're going to use splashings on this piece of chip chipboard um what i would say when you're using a chipboard do always cover it with gesso especially if you're going to be using a lot of water a lot of moisture on it a lot of uh, you know a lot of your acrylic sprays or <clears throat> water-based sprays whatever they are if it's liquid give it a coat of gesso because it will just help it absorb um, you know all that moisture that you're throwing at it otherwise you know you do need to remember after all it is still paper so um you know be be good to it and it will serve you just as intended i'm gonna kind of stipple 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 um some of the gesso just to cover it um it is quite intricate so i'm being quite careful and what's going to come really handy here, let me just lift this up, what's going to come really handy here is my gel medium from 13 Arts. I'm going to use it as an adhesive. Do, do, do. Gel medium. There we go. Beautiful, gorgeous gel consistency. Great stuff. Uh, I'm going to take a brush. This is really falling apart, that brush. It needs a little bit of love. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that um, gel here and there to, to, to just to adhere it as again perfect perfect adhesive um just to make sure that it is all stuck down okay and here we go this is a uh, this is a multi-layer design perfect this needs to be dried love malta shell uh, uh oh okay <laughs> hi shell Hi, hi Michelle. Oh, I'm just reading you. Marjorie, uh, oh, I only have five minutes. Are you bringing any of the 13 hours products to Birmingham? Yes, there will be loads. Absolutely. Yes, Marjorie. I am. <laughs> hi, Sarah. I'm just reading your comments now that I've got a moment. Okay. So, um, just trying that very quickly, this is not going to take long. I want to use some some different uh, products on it, like uh, sprays. I want to use some sprays and I want to use some splashings, just to show you those, because we haven't I haven't introduced them to you yet. Um, okay, so um, let's have a look at some of the splashings and uh, let's have a look at some of the sprays. There are three different types of sprays, so let me just grab uh, three of those. Um, and I'll show you the difference between those. Okay, so I've got three. Um, you've got chalk, you've got chalk spray, which um, has, you know, quite a lot of, it's, it's got obviously quite a lot of chalk underneath. Um, uh, it's um, the, um, the chalk is, um, the chalk is colored, I believe. Um, and, um, you know, and you got that, you, when, you when you spray it, you get the pigment, kind of matte pigment, um, and then uh, and then the kind of chalky finish. Uh, but I would say it is slightly more vibrant than 
the pastel sprays the pastel sprays they're you know the colors are well as as the name says the colors are all pastel and they are very kind of mil very milky looking pastel sprays are some of my absolute favorite because what they've got the um white chalk underneath and then they've got quite a lot of pigment in them so when you mix it all up you get this beautiful kind of milky color oh some of my absolute absolute favorite uh colors and products from 13 hours are the pastel sprays um and then and then you also have a shimmer spray so you know depending what floats your boat um what you like you can already see it's starting to look over milk you need to give a really really good shake good shake um and what i really want i want some turquoise that's what i'm looking for actually i've got chalk ultramarine, ultramarine so that will be fine and then you also have the power one so that then you in power one you get the mica so a lot a lot of shimmer of course so you get the same kind of you know beautiful color vibrant color and then you get your uh, your shimmer at the bottom so i can see that you guys are really going for the 13 arts just want to say thank you i, I get updates on my watch how sad um i just want to say huge huge thank you uh both ida and i appreciate it um these are beautiful products and and also what's really really good is that they've, they've got really affordable uh, price label which is um which is great which is always great especially right before christmas and if you want some um, creative you know, if you want something, some exciting, creative uh, gifts uh, for your crafty friends, I think, you know, a bottle or two of sprays or splashings, it will really do the treat, treat and it definitely won't break your bank. Um, so I would definitely highly recommend it. Okay, I've grabbed the pastel mint um, uh, spray. I'm going to use this along with some teal and then along with some a little bit of brown and we will see how all how that looks on this beautiful um need moony <laughs> um uh, that how that looks on this beautiful uh, ornate um background from uh slip art I'm, I'm trying to really hard to give a good mix i should have done that before but you can't always find the time for everything okay i'm going to give it a little bit of a spray We've got this beautiful mint green. Oh, this is such a stunning colour. Have a look. Um, what a beautiful colour. And then I want a little bit of teal. Oh, it's kind of turquoise. This is one of my favourite Ida inks. Uh, this is a splash ink in a turquoise. And it looks very pastel -y. It looks beautiful. I would definitely suggest that you give it, give it a really good mix to get all those pigments from underneath and i'm just gonna take some out okay and i'm just gonna drop it i'm just literally going to splash it just as it's intended splash 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 oh gorgeous what a beautiful result really love it okay I shall uh, probably clean my finger a little bit because otherwise I'm going to be blue. I'm going to be all blue on Hochanda tomorrow. <laughs> okay, zap with the heat gun. And then once I dry with, with the heat gun, I'm going to add some more color. So you're going to get that layering going. Uh, you know, when you sometimes look at the works, when you sometimes look at, at, at people's, people's projects and you think, how do they achieve it? A lot of the time they just keep layering and layering and layering obviously that layering is slightly organized which is a good thing uh, but a lot of the times you get those really intricate beautiful results uh, by just simply not simply because it's not always simple but by layering and um, so that's what you do you add you add something then you add a little bit more let me add a little bit more as long as you stay you know with the colors that generally go with each other that's brilliant i'm going to pick up just picked up another one uh, which is the pastel turquoise i'm going to use that <laughs> that's okay my jury bye um okay and i'm just gonna get that give it a really nice shake again one of my favorite colors and definitely go together with this beautiful splashing that you can just splash in this one you spray one you splash the other one you spray 
you know what? It's getting really warm in here. I think, uh, you know, we're getting a little bit of a wind and now we're getting this funny um, weather. Okay. Here we go. I've got some stronger concentration of the splashing, which I'm probably going to use also some darker colour. And maybe a little bit of purple, I'm thinking. Let's do that. Oh. Okay. You must, you've got to love a little bit of purple. Purple, I'm just going to do it like kind of diagonal. And then we can then make it really nice and shimmery. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the chat, see what you're saying. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pop that, dry that quickly. Oh, this is such a beautiful combination of colours. I really need to dry this, just give it a nice, quick, nice good zap. So that I can lift it up and show you how beautifully all those colours are blending together. Okay. Here we go. I think this will be okay for now. As I, as as you could see, I have zapped it with a heat gun. So I'm um, sorry. I have um I have covered it with uh gesso to start with. So it will then be able to take a lot of that moisture. So here is um I'm just gonna have a look at the preview of what I'm doing, what I'm showing you. So here is that beautiful color combo, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pearl spray. This is the uh, oh not chalk. I wanted the pearl one. I'm going to find a, either a gold pearl or um, silver pearl um, that I want to spray. Oh, oh, maybe I'm going to use a bronze. Okay, I've got pearl gold here. We're going to add a little bit of warmth because if you remember, we've got this, uh, this fella to work with. Um, I'm going to use that one and this, has, this is full of mica and it's got a little mixing bowl as well. So just give it a really nice shake. Okay. And we can add a little bit of warmth to this as well. I'm just trying not to oversaturate that, but um, perfect. You can always add more purple, but have a look at this beautiful, now we have the shimmer. We don't only have turquoise, we also have a little bit of that um, pink, of that, um, uh, so we've got turquoise and we've got the uh, violet and we also have this beautiful gold that it has given us this stunning, stunning shimmer. Okay, right. Um, I am going to uh, give my uh, table a little bit of clean because honestly, literally, no nowhere to uh, to craft anymore. I am going to try to take as much as I can of this, although it's obviously possible that I will just make one fat mess. Okay, so we got that already, um, and what I'm going to do now is, I didn't want to do something with this, okay, I'm going to add this to my project, this may still be wet as well, actually this will definitely still be wet, but I'm just thinking I want to get that down here, and maybe I will leave it so that it dries, it just sticks to that texture paste I've got underneath. Okay, that's fine. And then I'm going to take a little bit of, um, what's it called? Muslin cloth. Look at my hands. Messy, messy, messy. I'm going to take some of that muslin cloth and then just thread it through the middle of it. But before I do that, we need to colour it. And then for colouring it, we can use some of the products as well. So I'm just going to have a quick look at what we could use to colour it. And I'm thinking, how about some of the beautiful, I've got the woodbine glitter. That's what I'm going to add. It's like a stained glass window. It is indeed. Obviously it's got to be decorated a little bit more, but that's fine. I do need to clean my table a little bit because otherwise we're going to have big, big mess. Gosh, this glass mat has seen it all now. Well, not all maybe, but quite a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take some of this. Would you believe that I literally have no scissors? Because all scissors are downstairs because the girls are ribbon tying your boxes, which are shipping tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. We can always work without. I will, I will do my absolute bestest. Okay, so I'm going to take some of that brown, gorgeous glitter. Give it a really good shake. 
even mix it with a little stirring mix stirring um stirring uh thingy what's it called and i'm just going to drop some of that here and there isn't that gorgeous beautiful that is so stunning loving those colors especially on that lovely little muslin piece okay and then i'm going to take one of the sprays but i do need to find a, like a light shimmery one so hold on girlies i shall be with you very shortly oh found it fantastic i've got the pearl silver i'm going to use silver gold would probably be a little bit better but i've got the silver that will do just fine as well looks like there's a little blood on this i promise there isn't it's just all shimmery beautifulness okay and i'm just going to give it a spray because i want this these colors to bleed a little bit and i still get that gorgeous gorgeous glitter oh that has spread out the color beautifully and i'm not sure if you can see the glitter if not i'm going to show you in just a sec i'm just going to add a little bit more to now this a little bit wet something smells nice I don't know what smells nice it smells like apples okay so you've got that and then let me just i just really want to show you this this is obviously going to make my hands proper messy but have a look at this beautiful glitter kind of color payoff i know it does look like a bloody mess <laughs> Um, but promise you it isn't it looks a bit more red on the camera that um that i would have liked it but hey you know we we have halloween very soon so why not it is very pretty anyway i promise if we wanted a bit less red we can add always add a slightly different color oh let's do that let's add another glitter color if i can find one uh purple oh let's add some purple that will be pretty. So it doesn't look like we just killed an animal. Um, okay, just add a little bit. Of, oh, that's better. Woo! And goodness me. Okay, a little bit of a purple glitter splashed everywhere. Here we go. And then I will I will dry with a heat gun, and it's going to be less vibrant when it's dry as well. So you can see how that works. Oh, lovely. Yeah, definitely, definitely less vibrant when it's dry. Which is good. So this is how you can play with all those beautiful products. And you lift it up a little bit. Just to get it nice and dry. I'm dreaming. I'm, I'm dreaming. What? I'm singing now. Gosh, I've got I've got some really weird sing-offs today. Do, do, do. Hold on. Just gonna get that dry. Look at this beautiful kind of colour payoff. You can obviously use it on other projects still. We need that. We need to unravel this a little bit and just carry on. They're going to be like what have you been doing woman like i'm gonna go on her channel tomorrow with Vermeeran, which is obviously non-messy they were like what on earth have you been doing with your hands have you been in a slaughterhouse nope playing playing with mixed media oh i love those beautiful colors they're just so pretty okay here we go Add that. I really need uh, me some scissors, but they're all with the girls downstairs. Just thinking, I'm gonna somehow add a little bit of that to this. Okay, and then I'll cut it later. That's fine. And uh, someone told me, "What a crafter without scissors? What on earth?" It's like, sorry, all scissors are downstairs. <laughs> 
That's my excuse usually. Right, I've got some of the metal flowers, so I think I'm going to add some of those, but maybe before I do that, I am going to get them covered in some gesso. Oh, and I still had some on my brush and it wasn't dry yet, which is great. Look, one, two, three, super quick, very, very quick effect. Perfect. Quick zap. Beautiful. Okay, and then I think we need to add a little bit of colour to it. And I'm just thinking, what colour should we add? I think we need some more sparkles, or, or, or you're going to be like, no, no more glitter. I'm just looking at what other sparkly one I've got handy. And so I've got this lovely uh, gold glitter, which is slightly different to the one I was using before, which looked like a red one. And I'm going to add just a little bit in the centre. That probably needs a much better mix than I've given it just to give the flower a bit of a centre and that would be so pretty. It is so pretty already. There is a little mixing bowl in those so you need to start, you know, you need to mix it enough to release that little bowl. At least it was in, in some of those that I've been using on Hachanda. Yeah. Okay, that will just be... Oh! Fantastic. This is what we needed. A little more concentration of this gorgeous glitter and then you can just add a little bit I'm just I would just put a little bit on your mat Ooh, here we go add a little bit to your mat close it up take a brush and then you can add or pilot knife and you can add some to your pieces oh this is beautiful such an easy way as well no faffing as much as I love my mixology, sometimes you just need a ready-made product to, uh, you know, just to grab and play. It's like plug and play. All those devices for computers back then, back in the days. I mean, everything is plug and play now. You don't expect to install any dry drivers anymore, do you? Okay, just adding very Christmassy. We're, getting, we're, getting, we're going very Christmassy at the moment. Okay. Slightly different color palette for my for my um, um, uh, to co comparing to what I normally do. I'd say, but I really like that. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Here we go. Now, the more when you zap it with your heat gun, you are gonna get that sparkle. So that's what we're going to go for. Just dry that acrylic medium that the glitter is suspended in. Um, and then um, have a little bit more of the sparkle coming through. Beautiful. Really, really pretty. Okay. And if some of it just starts coming out, it doesn't matter. Because it's all creative play. Oh, nice. Obviously, if it's a metal embellishment, be careful when you're picking this up because it will be hot. Okay, I'm just going to add that one. And I think this may potentially need a little more of my, of like natural, like, um, thingy flowers. What's it called? Not thingy flowers, the, um, uh, mulberry flowers. But... I also have these, which I recently got, and I think they will just add something really special to this piece. They're gorgeous gold branches, and they're just, we, we had those in brass before, but these will just make it all very, oh, very kind of, it's just, it pops, then you get that beautiful color pop to all that piece, which is a lovely, okay? Just ignore that it's just hanging off there. Just ignore it. Um, and then whilst I'm at it, I'm also going to take some of the filigrees. Okay. 
Uh, do you know what? I was just thinking. I have another thing. I might just ah yes. That's what I'm gonna do. This is crafting life for you. This is this is a lot of kind of inspiration that's coming to my head. Uh, I'm just wondering what to do. Okay, uh, resin pieces. Resin pieces are absolutely fa fabulous. Do you do Polish fish or English turkey at Christmas? Both. <laughs> I'm doing both, Deborah. Um, I'm doing both. Oh, that's a very good question. Okay, I'm going to take um this uh, frame and I'm thinking, should we do black? Should we do black and just really sparkle the heck out of it? What do you think? Mm, maybe I'll do white. <laughs> okay, I'll do white. And I'm going to cover it very quickly with gesso. Obviously dry it with a heat gun because that's important that you get a cl um, that you get dry gesso. And I'm going to give it a paint with those beautiful acrylic paints. And you can really see how wonderful that is. Okay. Dry that. That dries in no time, by the way. Super, super quick. And I'm going to take a paint from the collection and I'm thinking oh, I really wanted to show you some of the kind of antiquing uh, techniques with 13 Arts products so whilst I'm here do you know what let's do this I know this is kind of a bit all over the place but at least I'm just giving you I, I hope I am giving you a lot of inspiration when it comes to different techniques. So if the you know if the piece is not gonna come out great, that's fine. But what I'm really what I really wanted to show you is all those elements that you can use to create, you know, your your beautiful bespoke pieces. Um so the, the techniques may not necessarily go together, but you know. So yes, this is really exciting. Let's totally do this on my really, really dirty mat. Okay, so um 13 Arts have this beautiful set of um set of paints, set of um, vivid vintage uh, paints. I, I have four here. I believe there are six or seven. There are quite a few of those. Um, and I also have two of their mattes as well. And I pick those colours together. Um, and um, thank you very much. Someone just made an order for 13 arts. Yay, thank you. Um, okay. So I'm going to take some of those and really show you how you can kind of vintage and antique a piece of, um, you know, resin. Which, by the way, Craftbox is going to start stocking much more resin to what we have at the moment. I think that's exciting news for everyone. I do really hope so anyway. Um, okay, so let's have a look at some of those techniques. The first thing you're going to need to do that is you're going to need the paint in the right colours. Um, can you use the paints and sprays and ceramic, ceramic, ceramic tiles? Uh, Lynn, yes you can. However, I would suggest that you prime it first because you need something to grip uh, those paints. So prime it. Uh, you know, if you want to see through effect, then obviously, um, oh, well you don't want, yeah. Then prime it either with clear gesso or white gesso or black gesso, whatever effect you're going for. But yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's have a look. Oh, I love those paints. They are some of my favourite. Okay. You can kind of see what I'm going for here in a way. A little bit of rust maybe, a little bit of definitely a little bit of vintage or definitely very vintage. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to start with this brown. Again, the texture of those paints is exceptional. It's very thick. You can use it as stencil paste as well. In fact, we can have a little bit of the... Um, we can have a little bit of play with that in a moment. Oh, I'm, got, I've, I'm loving this, guys. I hope you really like this kind of, this lots of creative chemistry stuff, she says. Um, and then I'm going to take some of that, um, some of that. You definitely try using these as a texture paste. They are so affordable. You know, they're such, such a brilliant value for money. They really, really are. Um, you know they are because they are thick you can dilute them you can use them sparingly or you know you can use a lot of it um but they will definitely go um a long way because how often do we actually use a whole pot of paint you know and then to for you to have a wide a range of colors you know having paints that are really well priced but maybe in smaller pots like these that is perfect because you get all the colours and will you ever use that, you know, 6, 50, 60 millilitres pot of colour? You will use, definitely use a lot of gesso and definitely use a lot of texture, you know, glues and all that stuff, texture paste. 
but the paints the actual colors if you want to have lots of colors you know this is a brilliant range okay i am going to take some of that uh, brown i'm going to show you how to make an instant rust paste um i've got black sand here this may be too much sand for the amount of paint but we can always grab more paint so that was black sand which by the way if you want more of this is this is not a sand from a um from any odd uh, beach this is a sand this is a quartz sand obviously that has been cleaned so keep that in mind quite important um i am going just to clean this and i'm going to take more of that beautiful coffee this color i'm using here is espresso definitely very dark brown you know i love my rust and patinas and you add a little bit of you know quartz sand to it and you've got instant instant rust paste I mean, it's amazing it looks a bit black it's not black uh it is very um it is very brown very dark brown but it's brown i'm just added a little bit more just to get a little bit more of that perfect this is exactly the consistency i wanted you see very quick i'm going to take a little bit do you know what i am going to take a little bit really want to show you the grit of that can you see the right color of brown paste and then quartz sand which which we we i can add to the website because i think we ran out uh, i think michelle was asking me about having that as well uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to take that frame and really load this onto my frame and i'm going to show you in a second how you can shape this obviously you do all the sides you know when you're doing this at home and you're not you know i'm not, I'm not going to go and play with the sides at the moment because that would take us a really long time but just going to add that paint i love mixing stuff i love creating things like that because it just shows you it shows you a really versus versatile use of all the products and that frame is one of my favorites so you can see me using it over and over again okay so here you go look guys we had a white frame just a moment ago one two three and a little bit of right colors of paint um, and a little bit of sand that was mixed with it just to make your own kind of rust texture paste done obviously as i said it's got a lot of white spaces you know it would take me quite a while to fill that in but you would do that at home by all means i'm just going to take um, some of the towel and give it a good clean i think it's really exciting to do those demos on youtube because you know i like the fact that i can i've got the time to show you things properly um i, I love i love doing hochanda don't get me wrong but with hochanda specifically um with hochanda specifically it is the case of um of you know the demos cannot be longer than like seven minutes and if you have a really long demo then you kind of rushed and uh, i love doing demos and showing you things properly because i think it's important it's like doing a workshop for you guys you know without actually you, you with you watching online okay it is important you're going to dry this how do you use the natural mica flakes from 13 arts asked lynn um good question and i'm going to have that on a website i'm going to put them on a website uh, I would use them as a texture. I would just take a little bit of uh, gel medium, for example, and then sprinkle them. Um, I think that would look beautiful uh, on your project. So, for example, when you put a frame and you want like kind of something that will gradually flatten the edges, then I would just sprinkle. Um, I would just put some uh, gel medium and then just sprinkle some of those around it, or maybe a few on top as well. I think that would look great. I need to add them to the website. Just have that with the heat gun. Taking a little break from talking. <laughs> that will dry very quickly. that should be dry now you obviously you should you sh we can very easily add a little bit of graduation of color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a brush she says i'm going to take a brush clean it a little bit a 
could do with a baby wipe now. Anyone that has a baby wipe handy? Look at that messy Anna. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take some of those and very gently start adding them. Do you know what? I am going, I'm going to zoom in for this because I think this is quite an important part. So if you're still with me, which I really hope you are, um, I'm going to um, get, um, I'm going to uh, switch my uh, zooming thing on and then we will zoom in just to show you uh, this uh, as much as closely as I can. Okay, this is as close as I can get. Um, and I'm going to put that in the middle. Okay, um, unless I will be really cheeky and then just drop my, hold on, I want to drop my um, lens down. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm going to do this here and I'm going to have to lift that up later on. I hope this is close enough. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have three more colours. The colours I do have here, apart from that espresso, are red caffeine, brown sugar and cinnamon latte. These are the three colours that I have around here. Okay. And are we here? <laughs> oh, bless. Okay. So um, I hope this is zoomed in. Okay, yeah, it is. Um, I'm going to take this and start embellishing this just to add a bit more of that rust. That white really bothers me, uh, so I'm sorry. But you, you you, can see, you know, why I'm not doing all of this because it would take us ages. And I stopped talking. Okay, we're taking a little bit of this one, which is the cinnamon latte. I'm taking the cinnamon latte on my brush and gently adding that. Okay. If your paint is a, still a little bit wet, that might be good news. Let's just take that brush away because you're just going to get that blending, you know, that blendability really. Here we go. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Oh my God, I got so excited by this. I'm, I'm quiet because I'm loving this. The effect, I hope you can see this uh, quite, no, I hope you can see this on camera. I'm gonna zoom in in a second. Um, so I finished with that bright, which is cinnamon latte. I'm going to take some of the brown sugar and then I'm gonna take some of the red in a moment. The brown sugar is definitely kind of, you know, a, a much lighter uh, color as well. Beautiful, this is such a stunning effect. You may think, you know, you look at those colors on the website um, and then you think, do you know what? They all look very kind of unappealing because they're very brown. Don't think that. Because look at all those amazing things that you can do with those colours. They're absolutely stunning. You know, we don't always have to go for the bright colours. This is amazing. I do need to uh, dry this a little bit before I move on. And then I'm going to take some of that red colour, which is called uh, red caffeine, and really rust the heck out of this. Oh, this is beautiful. So you get that brown as, as your base, and then that red caffeine, not everywhere, because we don't want to cover all of it, but in some strategic places. You could, for example, do that inside. That would look really nice, actually, thinking about it. A little bit of a contrast. Oh, that would look nice. Hmm. Okay. Plain. Right. Get that little bit of red, and then zap it with a heat gun when you when you're happy with this. So have a look at this beauty. Let me see if I can um, make sure that it's in focus. Have a look at all those beautiful colours. Obviously, as I said, you know white. You'd cover it at home. You do it really, really thoroughly with a brown to start with, and then you just be adding the uh, the colours afterwards. Now, zap it with a heat gun. Shell just asked, do you sell them as a pack? And are they sent individually? Do you know what? I just had an idea, and I'm going to make you a beautiful rust pack. I'm just going to have a chat with Ida, and I'm going to make you a really nice, you know, with a nice discount, rust, 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 um, rust effect pack. I think this will be great. And then we can do patina effect uh, uh, pack as well, because I think they just would be great. Zap it. Okay. 
loving this. I want to dry it quite quite thoroughly because I want to do some highlights with the wax on top of that. I hope this is okay. This is dry now. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my fa well, the, my the favorite wax. The, my favorite wax is the white gold from Prima, which, by the way, is going to make appearance on a website very soon because I've got a huge shipment of that sitting in my living room. Um, and I'm going to take this wax and now highlight very gently. I don't want to ruin all that effect that we've been working so hard on getting. Um, when you do my workshop on Saturday at the introduction to mixed media, I will take you through all those uh, making rust and patina effects. Um, so that will be great. Okay. Now this has really added something special to your. You know, you can see, you can still have that vibrancy of all the beautiful colours that we've added. I'm not sure if it's showing that well on the camera, but it's definitely there. And uh, and then you have you know some a little bit of a highlight going on there okay I'm just going to close this up I, I just absolutely love this now I don't want to use it I'm going to keep it forever and then what I would do is um, let me just bring that there's going to be some deep some lots of cleaning going on I want I'm thinking of using that here and then those branches are really pretty they would just be go go be going there and then my little flowers I'm just thinking they may go inside and then may go outside something like that here we go okay so you can add it to your project obviously um, I'm thinking I am going to mess about with that with that thing I'm probably going to add tons lots of color um, afterwards but I really the, my, the key point I wanted to show you really if you kind of deconstruct this because I haven't stuck anything down um, let's just have a look at those individual elements because I think that makes a bit more sense. Um, so uh, you can create, you know, beautiful texture paste, beautiful coloured texture paste with all the. Uh, can you still see me? Oh, okay. Um, uh, with all the um, all the mediums you have, clear gel medium, uh, gesso, black gesso, texture paste. And add just a little bit of pigment, either paint or the dry pigment. Um, and then you can, you know, you can use your sprays and your chipboards. Make sure you gesso it first. Uh, add shimmer if you want to. Keep it matte if you don't. Um, you can change and alter your flowers. Just add a little bit of glitter. Obviously, dry that thoroughly, and it will be beautiful and beautiful and sparkly. You can use it on your muslin uh, cloth. Obviously, if you want to look like a bloody mess, that's fine. And um, if not, that you can use some different colours as well. That was probably a portrait of colour on my part. But have a look at this beautiful glitter. Just ignore the colour. The beautiful, beautiful glitter. Just is absolutely stunning um and um and you know just just uh just diluted by spraying with uh with some shimmer sprays you can make rust effects as well and you can definitely make a patina effects um you just need uh three or four colors of the brown especially from the vintage collection a wax of your choice be it pentart be it um be it prima um and then you have the beautiful rust frame very easy to do um as well um, so we have all those things going on. Um, I really, <laughs> I really think, I really hope, um, uh, I really hope you like it. Shell just asked, is the workshop full? No, we have four spaces. We have four spaces left in Birmingham. Um, if you want it, please grab it. I am going to adver be advertising again this weekend, well, by the end of today. So I think they will be gone soon. Um, so please grab them whilst you can. Uh, we have a nice group of 30 um, and um, and it will be, you know, I hope it will be really informative. I'll give you tons and tons of ideas for having lots of creative play. So... I hope you enjoyed this uh, and um, yeah, and I will see you again very soon. I hope you like 30 Art. I absolutely love the product. So many different variations. You can do vintage, you can do modern, you can do neon, you can do whatever you want uh, with such a huge variation of colours, stencils, paints, uh, texture mediums and uh, and other stuff. So uh, link down below um, to the actual collection, to what we have in stock in UK, what we can order for you. And I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Bye.